Welcome to UMass Boston Global Affair Major Start on Track, Stay on Track presentation. The goal of this presentation is to provide key information you need to start on track and stay on track towards earning your bachelor's degree in Global Affairs from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. In order to start on track, you must know your goal or destination. In this case, your goal or destination is graduation. In order to graduate with a bachelor's degree in Global Affairs, students must meet three criteria. First, students must earn a minimum of 120 credits. Secondly, they must complete all degree requirements. This includes general education requirements, major requirements, as well as general electives. And finally, students must also have a grade point average of a 2.0 or higher. A 2.0 is equivalent to a C average. You will work with an academic advisor throughout your degree to make sure you are on track to completing these three requirements and therefore on track to graduate. Successful students understand the university's academic calendar. The academic calendar can be found on the registrar's webpage. Please see the link provided, which provides important information such as when the semester begins, the add drop deadline, the pass fail and course withdrawal deadline, registration dates for upcoming semester, final exam dates, and holidays and dates in which the university is closed. Please note that the regular and College of Advancing and Professional Studies, or CAPS calendar, differ, so it's important that you're aware of the classes you're enrolled in and the corresponding academic calendar and deadlines. Most likely, your online courses will be offered through CAPS, but if you opt to take an on-campus, regular section course, be aware that the start and end dates may differ from your online courses offered through CAPS. It's important not only to be aware of these key academic dates and deadlines, but it's also vital to understand the considerations and implications that are associated with them. Once a student registers for classes, they are able to add, drop, and swap classes without financial or academic penalty up until the add, drop deadline. This means a student can make schedule adjustments and the course will not appear on their transcript or on their bill up until the add, drop deadline. However, a student is financially and academically responsible for any course on their schedule after the add drop deadline. Therefore, any course on your schedule after the add drop deadline will appear on your transcript and you will be billed for. The university has a grading option that allows students to take one course per semester for a maximum of eight semesters on a pass-fail basis. When a class is taken on a pass-fail basis, if a student passes, meaning they earn a grade of a D minus or better, Credit will be earned, a P as in pass will be recorded on the transcript, and there will be no impact on GPA. However, if a student opts to take a class pass fail and they fail the course, an F will appear on their transcript, no credit is earned, and the F will calculate into GPA. Please note, it's recommended that you speak to both your instructor and advisor before opting to take a course on a pass fail basis. Talking to your instructor helps to confirm your assessment of your grade is accurate. Speaking to your academic advisor is important because not all classes can be taken on a pass-fail basis. For example, Global Fair major courses cannot be taken on a pass-fail basis. They must be taken for a letter grade. Students may need to withdraw from a class for a variety of reasons. When students withdraw, a W is listed on the transcript, no credit is earned, and there's no impact on GPA. Students are still financially responsible for classes they withdraw from. Again, please note, students who are planning to withdraw should speak to their advisor about the impacts on their academic plan. In addition, students with financial aid should speak to their financial aid counselor about the financial implications of a withdrawal. Successful students understand how their grade point average, or GPA, is calculated. When calculating GPA, each letter grade earned has a corresponding grade point equivalent. As you can see from the chart, an A is equivalent to a 4.0, a B plus is a 3.3, a C minus is a 1.7, et etc. et cetera. To calculate your GPA, list your letter grades in one column, then the grade point equivalent next to the letter grade. Multiply each grade point equivalent by the number of credits for each class to determine the quality points. Add up all the quality points and divide by the total number of credits. The answer will be your grade point average for that semester. In this example, a student is enrolled in four courses. Each course is a three credit course, and the grades earned are A-, minus, B-, minus, B, and C+. Plus. If we multiply 3.7, which is the grade point equivalent for an A minus, by three credits, we will get 11.1 .1 quality points. Similarly, a B minus would be 2.7 grade points multiplied by three credits, giving us 8.1 quality points. If you total the quality points, in this case 11.1, 8.1, 9.0, and 6.9, it results in 35.1 quality points. If you divide 35.1 quality points by 12 credits, the student's semester GPA is 2.93. While it's important to understand how GPA is calculated, the University Advising Center has a GPA calculator tool on their website to assist students in determining their GPA. 
students can use the calculator to determine their semester GPA, their cumulative GPA, or a goal GPA. If you have any questions about using the GPA calculator, please meet with your advisor. It is vital to understand how GPA is calculated as it relates to the university's academic standing guidelines. In order to continue taking courses at the university, students must be in good academic standing, which the university considers a cumulative GPA of 2.0 or higher. Again, a 2.0 is a C average. If a student's GPA falls below 2.0, there are varying levels of academic standing as you can see from the chart provided. If you find yourself below 2.0, it's essential that you work with an academic advisor to discuss resources and academic policies in place to support you in returning to good academic standing. For more information on the varying levels of standing and implications, please view the information listed on the registrar's webpage via the link provided. There are many offices and departments that support student success at UMass Boston. One office that is available to students is Academic Support Programs, located in the Campus Center, first floor, room 1300. If you are physically on campus, Academic Support offers various drop-in workshops on topics such as time management, note-taking and study skill strategies, and exam prep. Academic Support Programs also has a Reading, Writing, and Study Strategy Center to help students with critical reading and writing skills. Students can reference the RWSSC website for more information on available resources. In terms of online support, Academic Support has a robust wiki page. Please see the link provided for more in-depth information. In addition, Academic Support is also available on the 8th floor of the Healy Library. Students who are physically on campus can utilize subject tutoring in the Math Resource Center. The Math Resource Center offers both one-on-one -on -one and drop-in tutoring for students enrolled in a math course. Please refer to the links provided for more in-depth information about these areas of support. Beyond academic supports, there are many other offices and departments that support student success. The Ross Center is located in the Campus Center on the upper level near the Testing Center, and this office supports students who may have had any accommodations in high school or at a previous college or university. Some examples of services provided by the Ross Center include testing accommodations such as extended time or separate testing location, interpretive services, and or assistive technology. At the conclusion of this presentation, you'll find a link to the Ross Center website where you can find more in-depth information on resources and services provided. University Health Services is located in the Quinn Administration Building on the second floor, and this office can assist students with immunization records and evaluation and treatment of health problems. Again, for more in-depth information, please reference the helpful links at the conclusion of this presentation. Another office that supports student success is the Office of Career Services and Internships. Career Services is located in the Campus Center, first floor, room 1300. Career Services has a robust website with resources including career planning, Focus 2, a career exploration inventory tool, internship opportunities, job search resources, and assistance with choosing a major. While a great deal of career resources can be obtained and submitted electronically, the career services specialists are also available to converse with students via phone appointments, as well as in-person appointments for students who may be on campus. You'll find a link to the Office of Career Services and Internships under helpful links at the conclusion of this presentation. Haley Library is a tremendous resource for students. The library provides Ask a Librarian service, which allows students to consult the librarian via phone, email, or by chat 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In addition, the library can assist students with resources, interlibrary loan, and research guides. For more information about the library and services provided, please reference their website, which is also listed under helpful links at the conclusion of this presentation. Student Activities and Leadership is an office for students who want to engage in the campus community. Please visit the Office of Student Activities located on the third floor of the Campus Center to learn more about the over 100 clubs and activities available to students. We hope that you found this presentation helpful. If you have any questions or concerns about information covered in this presentation, please contact your advisor and or the respective departments for more information and guidance. Finally, please see the helpful links below for more information regarding some of the resources available to students at UMass Boston.